you want to get best returns in your real estate investing then you must have properties in a great location then the question comes if i have a property in a great location then the challenge is having a cash flow don't worry about it today i'm here with a guy who is getting a great cash flow in a great location like south windsor so watch out for the rest Savio, first of all, thank you so much for letting us into the, your property. Yeah. So we are definitely curious to know more about this project. What what are you doing here, and what's the projections look like? Yeah, yeah. So as you can see right now, the basement unit is is not uh, finished, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we are going to convert this into a second legal unit. Hmm. Legal means uh, basically we're going to go to the city and apply for a legal secondary suite. So you know, uh, at any given point it'll be a uh, double cash flow. We can rent the upper unit separately versus the lower unit separately, increasing our cash flow. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. First of all, let's take a step back and where are we right now? Which location is this? Okay, yeah, so we're, <laughs> we're, we're in South Windsor. South Windsor, uh, basically this area is known for its great schools. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people wanna move in here because of the high school, which is uh, known for its math program. Um, and also the elementary schools are pretty good in not only in Windsor, but in the whole of Ontario. Oh, wow. So really a family oriented um, neighborhood, you know, a lot of wartime bungalows just like this. Mm -hmm. So really bungalow, you know, about a thousand square foot, perfect for legal conversions. Yeah, awesome. So first of all, the location is great. Yep, and has to be, has to be. <laughs> <laughs> You want renters, right? So, uh, you know, people want to come in here uh, because of all the things that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So you know that the rental market is always going to be uh, uh, full. Sounds great. And what's the purchase price? Uh, so we got this one actually off market <clears throat> and we paid uh, 275 for it. Yeah, I love off market deals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. How Pretty much are you expecting in rents for main floor and the basement? Uh, both uh, together, we are expecting close to about uh, $2,800. So the upper unit is actually rented already uh, mm -hmm. for fifteen hundred a okay. month plus utilities. How many bedrooms? Uh, three bedrooms. Three bedrooms, one bath upstairs, and down here we're going to do two bedrooms and a bath, mm -hmm. uh, obviously with a, uh, with its own kitchen. And we're expecting to get uh, about thirteen fifty for that. Wow. Yeah. So what kind of uh, you know how, how much is the renovations you, are you expecting to do in this basement to convert like overall your estimations for the renovations yeah, for this so, type of projects? So you know um, you have a lot of other fees, not just the renovation fees, right? <laughs> so you have uh, architectural drawings first that you have to mm -hmm. do um, to make sure that basically you can fit what you're looking for in the space. Yeah. Now once you get experience, you can do those drawings yourself. But until then, you know you have to get an architect, uh, a BCI, and qualified. Uh, designated architect yeah that costs about two thousand two thousand five hundred dollars mm -hmm. uh, you gotta apply for the city obviously uh, yeah. to the city you know it takes time to get the the permits depending mm -hmm. on what happens in the city so you got to remember that you have holding costs until you get the permit because you can't start any work until the permit arrives yeah which is what i have right now over here which is awesome how much are you expecting to finish this whole project for yeah. like a, a total number yeah so actually in this place in this house we got lucky because the upper unit it was uh, was really you know rentable Okay. Right? So we didn't have to do much up there. Mm -hmm. uh, for the lower unit, all in from beginning to end, we're expecting to spend about uh, $60,000. So your total project cost is like two seventy-five plus 60000 Correct. Wow. Yes. And you're making... Give two, or take, yeah. So 2800 is your rent. So what's your cash flow? Oh, at the end of it, um, we will cash flow. You know, if we take into consideration our vacancies and mm -hmm. our maintenance and so on and so forth, we we are going to stand up between somewhere between six to eight hundred dollars a month. Cash wow, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty awesome because you know it, that's even tough to find in a normal neighborhoods in a single family homes, but in a great neighborhood with a great cash flow, I love that. Yeah, yeah, that's why we're doing it, right? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, you know, tell us a little bit more what. I, uh, like you know I know you said like you're gonna do a legal conversion right yeah so what kind of work are you gonna do in this basement to make that legal conversion yeah, yeah great. if someone looking to do this kind of project right yeah great question so um, you know if you want to do a legal conversion first of all I must say you got to do it legal 
right? You got to mm -hmm. go and apply with the city and let them know what you're trying to do. Yeah. Reason for that is 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 a couple of things. One is liability, mm -hmm. right? If you do it illegally, I mean, sure, we can finish this basement like a lot of people do in Windsor mm -hmm. and rent it out separately, but then you have a liability issue. What happens if there's a fire and the house mm -hmm. burns down? You know, let alone if there are people in the house. Yeah. But um, if let's say there's no people in the house and the house burns down. You're gonna have a tough time claiming that from insurance, right? Because they're gonna say you rented the this, the bottom unit uh, illegally, and you're mm. not allowed to have somebody there. So that's the first thing. Liability is definitely a concern. Yeah. Um, secondly, we have a housing shortage not only in Ontario but in Windsor specifically as well, right? Uh, this allows us the opportunity uh, to go to the city and say, listen, we are bringing something of value to the city, yeah. right? We are going to help this housing crisis and we're going to add more uh, units available for people who want to move to Windsor and live here. Yeah. So the city loves that, yeah. right? The city loves that. We're addressing their problem and it's private money, so they don't have to put any money into it, right? <laughs> so that's, right. Uh, so that's, that's why you want to bring the city involved mm -hmm. um, and do it legally because what, what's happening is that they're clamping down mm -hmm. on illegal second suites, right? So they're yeah. going and knocking on doors. If they, if, they, if they find out that there's you know tenants in the lower unit, which, are, which is not illegal. Mm -hmm. So you want to avoid that in the future, right? So yeah. definitely um, do everything legally in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then going back to your question about what must be done. So for sure, when you when you when you um, find or when you're looking for a house, there are a couple of things that you got to do even before you put an offer in. Mm -hmm. For example, you got to find out zoning, right? Can yeah. you actually do a legal duplex in that neighborhood? Okay. Um, flood uh, plains are uh, very much of a concern. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in a floodplain area, forget about it right off the bat, right? Uh, yeah. It's not going to happen. So you can. You, these are simple things that you can call the city, mm -hmm. give the address to the city, and say, listen, I want to legally convert the 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 base into a second unit, mm -hmm. um, a secondary dwelling, is it allowed or not? And they'll tell you right on the phone. Really? Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's a simple thing, but not a lot of people does that. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of people, I think, are fearful of government employees, uh, but, you know, <laughs> uh, per se, but you got to realize that they are working for us, right? They're yeah. working for you, you know, they're, that's your taxpayer's money. So, you know, uh, don't be scared about that. In fact, <clears throat> on the contrary, I would say in Windsor, the city officials are very, very friendly and very, very accommodating. So. Yeah, because they need more place, like more units to live for the tenants. Absolutely, absolutely. And in great neighborhoods like this, right? Yeah. So you can make a couple of calls first, um, mm -hmm. you know, just before you even put an offer in. Yeah. Um, you know, they look at square footage, for example. There are some rules that you got to follow. For example, mm -hmm. the, the second unit cannot be more than 40% of the total square footage of the of the home. So, okay. you know, things like that you got to be mindful of. Mm -hmm. That's why I said 1,000 thousand square foot bungalow is ideal. 1,000 square foot and above is ah, okay. ideal. Okay, right? so pretty much if it's a 1,000 square foot bungalow then you're gonna make a 600 or how much is the square footage gonna be well thousand square foot what we consider um, you know as you know when you list the property it's only the main living space yeah but in the calculation for the city when mm -hmm. they talk about it they talk about total living space because we are converting the basement as well as part of the living space yeah you can add another 800 uh, square oh, foot gotcha. to that. yeah right so now you're talking about 40 percent of close to 2,000 2, square feet, yeah. right? So which is about 800 square foot, which, would, which yeah. this will become into. That's eventually. good enough for a two bedroom unit. Absolutely, absolutely, awesome. very comfortable, yeah. Are there like any specific requirements like height, window, you know? Yep, for just sure. Just to keep in mind. For sure. So the Ontario Building Code is the is the code that one has to follow when, mm -hmm. uh, when legalizing a second suite. Um, great question because again these are the things you can do before even putting an offer in the house. Yeah. So ceiling height is definitely important. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to, uh, basically, I believe it's six, eleven and a half. That's what the building code says. Mm -hmm. But you know, I always look for seven feet when I come into a house. Yeah. And we're talking about because you got to realize you have finished floors. Yeah. And then you'll have a finished ceiling at the ceiling. end of it. Yeah. Right. That's right. So um, if you can come close to that seven feet or just mm -hmm. just uh, close enough, uh, you're good. Mm -hmm. um, you always have to have two egress uh, openings in the, in the basement unit, right? So in case of fire, um, yeah. you have the one which is basically the, the way out, right? Mm -hmm. And then you always have another window which will follow code as well that allow the person to get out uh, if one of the other entrances is yeah. blocked. Yeah. What would you recommend for people who are looking in to do these kind of projects? What kind of advice would you give them? Um, you know, uh, the first thing is don't be fearful about it because a lot of people uh, are scared to get into it because they have to deal with city officials. Mm -hmm. They've never done such a big renovation. Uh, they don't know, you know, where to start and where to end, right? Yeah. Um, of course, we have a lot of professionals around us. So, you know, if, any, if anything, you can always uh, call Aditya, call myself and we can guide you along that. But I think that's the biggest thing, right? People are scared to say, okay, 
do I take on such a big project? Yeah. In fact, once you start to do it, it's, it's so much easier and you'll get a hang of it. Mm -hmm. You'll understand the processes and you'll understand the benefits, right? Because yeah. at the end of the day, we're building uh, better communities. You know, we're allowing people to actually live in better communities where otherwise they are uncapable of. Yeah, exactly. Right? No, that so, totally makes sense. Yeah. And how do you find these kind of deals? Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of market deals. Uh -huh. Trolling, right? So you just have to walk the streets. I mean, I, I pretty much live two streets down the road here. So, you know, I okay. know exactly what's happening in South Windsor. That's my market. I don't play in any other markets in Windsor mm -hmm. uh, because I live here. So, I, you know, I got my, my ear on the ground and my feet on the streets. So. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So if you want this kind of deals, then just knock the doors. Yep. Or That's even it. you can call up uh, good agents. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Ask. If you don't ask, you'll never find, right? And I find a lot of people have this fear of asking in the first yeah, place. Yeah, that, that's so. a very good thing. Even I had like a lot of fear to ask. Now, yeah. eventually you'll understand that that's the only way to go. That's it. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Xavier, for your time and uh, you know all these things. And I will put all his details in the description just to reach out to him, you know, pick his brain or uh, if you want to partner with him in this kind of projects, he also takes investors, which we didn't uh, talk on this video, but you know, he's also like a, a, a big guy in the South Windsor cash flow game. So reach out to him if you want to learn or anything. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. And come back and see for the sure. progress. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I want to make a video once it's done. Yeah, for sure. Awesome.